Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here for this presentation of Plotter. Um, so first things first, you might be wondering, what is Plotter? Uh, so Plotter is a visual book outlining and planning software for writers like yourself. It's available for Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. Um, and it's been downloaded by quite a few writers over the last few years. Um, and Panthers like it too, so uh, don't get uh, struck by the name. Some, some people throws, throws them off. Um, so it's been seen on quite a few sites over the last year or so. You might be familiar with some of these sites. And um, authors have had some really nice things to say about it. Thank you very much, uh, including Mr. Michael Anderle. Uh, so my name is Ryan. Uh, I've been working with authors since 2013. Um, I started a marketing company a few years back. And uh, I joined up with Plotter in 2020 to help relaunch the program. And I'm an aspiring author myself. Hi, and I'm Cameron Sutter. It uh, feels really good to just take my mask off for a little bit. That's the real reason I wanted to present, just so I'd have a breather. <laughs> um, but I'm an indie YA author and a uh, software engineer by day. I live in Oklahoma, and I do have six kids. And my wife is here, so I want her to, she deserves a round of applause for the six kids. That wouldn't be possible without her. She didn't know I was going to embarrass her, so that was fun. Um, and also, there's a couple other people we want to just introduce quickly. We've got most of the plotter team here. So we've got Troy Lambert and Stacy Anderson with us. Um, they help us a lot with plotter. And, and so let's see, what else should I say here? The, um, I launched it back in 2017 for myself, for my own books. Um, you know, I was writing, I just wasn't happy with my process. And I was like, well, I'm just going to build it myself. And uh, as other people, started seeing it, they're like, that's really cool, I want to use it too. And so that's why it started spreading. Thank you, Cameron. So before we get into the demo of how it works, you might be wondering how Plotter can help you. Uh, so it helps people plot and outline faster, write cleaner first drafts, revise works in progress, improve productivity, save time. And a lot of authors tell us it helps them grow their own confidence in their plotting process. Uh, which makes the writing process more fun. So we love hearing that. And uh, so what we're gonna cover in this talk is how Plotter works. Cameron will be showing you a demo of the product. Uh, we're gonna show you what's coming next, or as we put it here, the next plot volution. <laughs> and uh, then we'll take your questions. Uh, so with that, Cameron, it's all yours. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a demo here. Oh, let's go back. And try and do this one-handed. I wasn't expecting the microphone in one hand. Um, so, pull out my notes. So I'm ex super excited to have you guys here and to show you how Plotter is going to help you to craft uh, your 20 books much better and much faster. And you might be thinking, as Ryan said, well, wait, I'm a pantser. Um, this doesn't make sense for me or I'm here because I'm forced to, my, my writing friend made me come to this session. But as you'll see, it's great for you. Uh, it's great for the whole process of writing, not just for the plotting phase of, of writing. And we'll show you how that works. So with that, I'm going to open up a, black, a blank project. So this is the first thing that you see in Plotter. This is what we call the timeline. And this is where you're gonna visually arrange your story. And one of the great things about Plotter is it's very visual. And that really changes the game for how you plan out your stories. You can think of it like index cards on your wall or sticky notes if you've ever tried that. I know a lot of people do. Or like a spreadsheet, um, which is one of the things that I tried. So you've got your chapters across the top here. And you can change the name of these to a scene or to a date if you want, whatever you want them to be. And down the side, you have your different plot lines. So we're going to add a few here. And it's really great, you can color code these, so you can make it whatever you want. So let's say this subplot should be that color, and maybe there's gonna be a, uh, the main character typing with one hand here. This is gonna be interesting. So maybe the main character's color should be, uh, I don't know what's a good color, we'll choose that one. No, that's hard to see. Choose this nice green one there. So it's really fun, you can color code it however you want. And these, um, Oh, perfect. Thank you. My wife is also brilliant. <laughs> we'll say it's hers. Thank you. <laughs> Falling on the sword for that one. <laughs> okay, that 
might make it a little easier. Maybe. Um, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm not used to doing this, you can tell. Um, all right, so I'll try again later when I'm less nervous. So here on the timeline, uh, you got your plot lines down the side here and your uh, chapters across the top. And in the middle, or at the intersection of these, you can um, create a new scene card. So we'll just call this scene. And, and you can drag these around wherever you want. So that's, that is what really makes Plotter really easy to use. It's just drag and drop. You can move it just like an index card. Oh, OK, yeah, that works. And I've got all these helpers, thank you. We'll try that. I need so much help. Thank you. <laughs> I think so. Thank you. Um, can people hear me like this? Anyways, I'm wasting a lot of time. Sorry. Um, so you can create these scene cards and move them around. And uh, it's really easy to use. It's not meant to be overwhelming. It's fun and colorful. It's easy to use. So I'm going to show you what uh, a more filled out project looks like. So I'm going to pull up The Three Little Pigs. This is a pretty well-known story, right? Everybody, I think everybody knows that. It starts with The Three Little Pigs Leave Home for the Big World. And when I hover over this, you can see there's more details there. And so it's not just a scene card, but you can add as much detail as you want in here, all your notes for that scene. You can say what uh, characters are in the scene, where it takes place. You can add tags and a color, which I'll get into in a little bit. But I'm just going to make it green for now, and you'll see why later. So then the, pill the pigs you know, build homes for themselves. Each one builds a different type of home. Pig one, we have, uh, we have a different uh, plot line for each one. So you can see the threads of the story kind of weaving together. So pig one builds a house out of straw, pig two out of sticks, and pig three out of bricks. Then the, pig come, or the, the wolf comes by. We've got a nice picture there. And he's hungry. He starts blowing down houses. And then at the end, they live happily ever after. So you can see your whole story here very visually. And Plotter is really great not just for your first book, but for all the books in your series. And to show you that, we've, uh, we've come up with a series for the Three Little Pigs. We've got uh, The Wolf Strikes Back and The Return of Mother Pig. So each one of these has their own plot line here. I haven't filled them out yet. I'm going to write these eventually. But you, so you can see book two and book three have their own plot line. And what's really powerful is there's a plot or there's a, a timeline for the whole series. So you can see the story as if each book were one chapter in a bigger story. And so you have book one, book two, and book three, but maybe something happens in between that doesn't show up on the page. Um, but you can visually arrange that here and you don't have to keep everything in your head. And maybe there's a character arc for your your whole for your character that goes throughout the whole series, and you can easily um, put that on here and see it. So some of the other things you can do here in Plotter is um, there's an area for all your notes. And so this is great for world building, backstory, ideas, magic systems, anything you want to put in here. Um, you can have lists and just rich text and images like you see there. And you have a space for all your characters. And this is really great because it helps you to keep all your characters consistent throughout the whole series. Um, I don't know if, how many of you write series, but uh, but I imagine most of you. And then when you're on like book seven, you start forgetting what happened in book one. Um, and if you don't have a good system or if your notes were like mine before I made Plotter, then they're you know, on one app on your phone for book one or, or you know, a, a piece of paper here and there. And they're just all kind of all over the place. But with Plotter, you're able to keep all your notes for the whole series in one place. You don't have to go back and read book one to know what that one character was wearing that one time. And there's plenty of different things you can, um, different attributes you can add to characters, and that's all customizable in here. So this becomes a, a full series Bible for you. All your notes and, and characters and all your places with all their information in one place to stay organized. And the last tab up here is the tags tab. And these are really great for the editing phase of, of your writing. And some people we talk to actually use it more during editing than when they're actually plotting. Um, especially pantsers, they'll you know, go back after they write the first draft and put things in here for their 
um, you know, after the first draft, and then they're able to edit it visually and just move things around. And um, other things you're able to do are like look at pacing, find plot holes, things like that. And these tags are really powerful for that. So we've got these um, color coordinated. Um, you don't have to do that, but I've, I made these blue ones are like different stages of the story. These green ones are the themes of the story. Um, status, like if, if I need to uh, revise it still or if it's done. And then one, a couple here for pacing, whether it's slow or fast. And you can do, the, do that however you want. Plotter's meant to be very flexible for your writing system. And so then you can go and tag almost anywhere in the story with these tags and filter to just see those ones. So if you just want to see the ones I'm done with or the ones that I need to still work on, or here in the timeline, Oh, yeah, I'm still on the series view. That's why I was like, that's not the story. <laughs> so here on the timeline, the filtering is really powerful and helps you to see. So if we look at, if we just want to look at the slow ones, for example, we've tagged these ones as slow. After the first draft, maybe we go back and we say, these two are kind of slow. And then we're able to see all our slow ones. And since there's two close to each other, like maybe we should do something about that. But it just is very obvious, very visual, pops out at you. You can also do that for the themes of the story. Maybe um, laziness is one of the themes here. So um, laziness versus hard work. And so we can see which ones talk about hard work and laziness. And you know, if it doesn't show up very much, maybe it's not really a theme in your book. Or if you want it to be, then maybe you can, um, you can change that. But it's very obvious to you. Um, one, of the, one of my favorite examples is using is um, Troy was telling us that uh, one of his characters got killed and uh, the, the character wasn't even in the, scene, in the scene. And he was able to see that here in Plotter, like, whoa, he, he's not even there. How did he get killed? So it, it's just very visual and very easy to see. You can do the same thing with these colors here. And that's why I made it this color. You can filter to just see those color. And that can be, some people use it for point of view. Some people use it for um, what stage of the writing in you're in. The color can mean whatever you want. So like, oh, this one I'm done with. This one I need to revise more, things like that. So there's lots of other things that I could go over. But one thing that I want to definitely touch on is templates. We've got over 20 templates in here. And those are different writing um, systems, different uh, plot structures that people have made. We didn't make them ourselves. Um, we found them from very popular ones like Hero's Journey, uh, lots of romance ones, mystery ones, thrillers, all sorts. We've got all sorts of templates in here. And they're really powerful. People love these because there's lots of detail in here. And it's, so it just lays out the beats for your story all ready for you. So if you're familiar with the system, you can just put in your pieces of the story. But if you're not familiar with a story, a type of story, it's really powerful to help you and guide you and so that you can learn how to um, write that type of story. Or if you want a subplot, like a romance subplot or a mystery subplot, and you're not familiar with that, the beats are already there for you, and you can make your story that much um, more powerful. And then lastly, you definitely want to start writing your book eventually someday. So um, in Plotter, you're able to export into Word or Scrivener. And with a couple clicks, you can just start writing. So I've got Scrivener pulled up here. And I exported the three little pigs. And so as you can see, you've already got your story structure built into Scrivener. You can see even the cork board here. And the screen size was not the same as on my computer, so I got to Make that smaller there. But all your notes from Plotter are right there next to you as you're writing. So you can just um, click on one of these. You can just start writing with all your notes next to you. And just with a few clicks, you're writing your story. It's really powerful. Um, OK. What do I do with my slides? All right, so that's a quick demo of Plotter. Um, there's lots more things that it could do, and you know I'd love to show you more. Um, and if you want to talk to us afterwards, or if you, if you want to just stop us, and we can show you more. But with that, I'll hand it back over to Ryan, and hopefully he won't have as much trouble with the microphone. All right. So there, there's more we can go over in the Q&A, um, and I think we'll have time. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to go through a few more things here. Um, so. Uh, you know, as Cameron was showing you, there are a bunch of ways that Plotter can help you craft your books faster. 
uh, visually organizing your story, uh, spotting and avoiding plot holes, creating your story bible, using proven templates to start, um, and then finally exporting and getting to writing. Uh, we also have lots of resources to help you better use the program. So we have video tutorials, we have documentation, uh, we have lots of um, demos based on classics like The Three Little Pigs. Uh, Troy here does YouTube interviews with authors, um, including a few people I see here in the audience, um, to help you better understand how to use the program for your own genre or style of writing. Uh, we have a Facebook group and we have a public roadmap where you can vote on your own ideas um, or, or vote on our ideas and, and add your own. Uh, we have a lot of upcoming features, uh, so Plotter is very much a, a work in progress. Um, so we have community templates, search and replace, chronological timeline, uh, keyboard shortcuts, and a whole lot more. This is very, a whole lot more. Um, so before we get uh, to your questions, we're going to show you one more thing that we have. Uh, we're excited to share with you here today. Um, so we're actually introducing a new thing called Plotter Pro, uh, which includes our new upcoming web version. Uh, so Plotter, as I mentioned, is, is currently available for desktop and mobile. Uh, Plotter Pro brings you Plotter on the web um, so that you can access Plotter on all uh, your web, desktop, and mobile devices. Uh, it automatically syncs across all of them. You can collaborate in real time with other people that you're working on a project on, like an editor or a co-author. It has built-in cloud backups, and uh, this finally makes Plotter available for Chromebook and um, anywhere, really, that you want to use Plotter on. So Cameron is going to show you a brief demo of how that looks. Um, and then we'll get into your questions after. All right, so now I know with the microphone, got that set up. Thank you for doing that. Oh, ha. So this is um, it's a little hard to demo on just one computer. We, we wanted to do it on two computers to show you how awesome it is that it's syncing back and forth between um, collaborators. But uh, we just couldn't do that with the connections here. So I'm going to attempt to show you how cool it is uh, with just one computer. But first, I want to show you. So this is Plotter in a browser. So it's uh, not only the full browser version, so everything we just showed you which was on desktop only, so it, you install it on your Windows or Mac computer. This is, this is the full thing in a browser, so that means you can do it whatever device you're on, you know, a public computer if that's what you only have access to, or, or wherever you can get to it. Wherever you can get to a browser, you can now get to your, all your plotter projects. So not only that, but it's actually the same project that I was showing you earlier, and so that's why this one is green. Um, so if I change that color, the other one that I showed you would, would change. So it's everything you love about the desktop version, but now you can um, do what I'm going to attempt to show you. So let's pull up that one again. No. Nope. It was probably, that's the one I just pulled up. Let's try this again. There we go. OK, so we'll try and make this small here. Small enough so you can see this. So, gonna drag this over a little. So when so over here on the left is the desktop version. Over here on the right is the the browser version. So when I would go to change the color here, it changes magically in the browser one. <laughs> and if I were to drag this from the browser, then almost instantly in the desktop version, it'll it'll change. It'll move over. So. Uh, all right, let's move that back. Don't get that. Um, so imagine, well, first of all, so how many people write or have written with a co-author before? Have written a book together with somebody else? OK, how about um, have worked with um, a writing coach before? OK, a little bit. How about uh, working with your editor to try and like a developmental editor. OK, lots of people there. Imagine, if you will, instead of, uh, so what's the biggest, one of the biggest problems you run into when you're collaborating with somebody? Sending versions of files back and forth. And now this is the, the final version, the final, final version, the final, final, final version, right? And trying to make sure, though, you know, have the right version of the finals, or of the files. But now, with Plotter Pro, 
you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can get on a call on Zoom or you know however you do it, and in real time be editing, be working on a story with that person, with your co-writer, with your editor. Your editor can help you figure out what's wrong and suggest edits and move it around as you're watching them do it. Um, and there's one other thing I wanted to, to show you um, that I almost forgot. And that is uh, doing it from the mobile version here. So um, there we go. So I'm going to pull up the three little pigs on my phone here. And I'm going to edit something and see if you guys can see what happens. Did you see it was a really small change? But I added a couple exclamation points there. Just from my phone. So now I'm going to erase them. And they're gone. So from your phone, from uh, a web, ver and this isn't uh, a browser on my phone. This is a native app on my phone. And from a browser or for the desktop version, you can easily sync your changes back and forth, collaborate with people. Um, it's going to really change the game for how people work together on their stories. And with that demo, I'm going to again pass it over to Ryan. If I can find this, there you go. Pot or two step. All right. Okay, awesome. All right, so you might be wondering, you know, why should I go pro? Like, why would I be interested in the pro version? Well, Cameron just went through a lot of it. Uh, so you can use Plotter now both online or offline, depending on uh, how you're set up. Um, so if you're not comfortable saving to the cloud at certain points, you can, you don't have to do that. Um, you can keep your files in sync across devices. Uh, you can save your files securely to the cloud, so if you're ever worried about your files getting lost, your computer blowing up, um, that won't be a problem here. And you can collaborate with basically anyone that you'd like to. Um, and maybe during the Q&A, Cameron, we can show how you would actually share something. Yeah. Uh, and there are, no, no, there are no device limitations. So if you, get, if you have Plotter Pro, uh, you can use it on as many devices as you'd like. Um, so we have a special deal here for anyone who's interested. Um, this is only available during the conference itself. Uh, so you can get it for $80 a year. It's going to be $99 a year when we launch it uh, publicly. Uh, so you can grab that QR code, and it'll go right to the checkout page. Uh, we also have, I'll go right back to it, but we also have this link, go.plotter.com slash 20 bucks Vegas. Uh, that'll bring you there as well. Um, so with that, we will, uh, le I'll leave this out for a moment. And uh, we will take your questions. So I just want to say that it's it's already available, so you can get it. But it's a special at at this conference only. So uh, question, yes. So oh. Yeah, okay. All right, we're moving stuff around. We're making changes, collaborating with somebody, and I'm like, no. I don't think I like those changes after all. I liked it how it was yesterday. Can I go back to where it was yesterday? Yeah, there's actually, oh, repeat the question, I forgot. So the question is, um, if, okay, don't repeat the question. <laughs> um, so now I forgot the question. Um, the <laughs> question is, uh, can, yeah, so um, is there, a way to go back. And yes, there are daily backups, so you can go back to the, the way it was before. There's an undo button also, so you can undo changes. Um, so yeah, you can go back. Okay. Yes, question back there. When you want to do the collaboration, are you file sharing between two separate accounts, or does the person who's collaborating with you need to be in the same account as you? Yeah, so that wasn't very clear because of the way I showed it. Um, but yeah, they're in separate accounts. So you don't have to like share data or anything. You're in separate accounts, but you just decide to share one of your projects with a collaborator, with as many collaborators as you want. Yeah. Uh, so the question was, do both people have to have Plotter? And yes, uh, they do, yeah. We have ideas for in the future how you wouldn't have to, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. 
Um, I noticed on the website uh, plotter dot com that you guys have a a, a lifetime membership. Um, is that the same thing as the Plotter Pro, or is that a, a different level? No, we haven't updated our website yet because this is still early access. This is like not public yet. So no, that's that's how we used to sell it before. But Plotter Pro is something that we'll add on to it in the coming weeks. So. So just to clarify, the, the lifetime is for the desktop and mobile versions only. Um, this is for the, the web access and the collaboration features. So you can integrate with Scrivener. Will you eventually be able to integrate with Atticus? Yes, we were waiting for that question. We were, we were talking to Dave Chesson yesterday about how we're going to do that and the timeline for it. So yes, we're definitely going to do that. I'm not going to get too techy with this, but you guys have version control on this. So say if you, you're collaborating with your editor and you want to go back several versions, is there a way to save like this is uh, version one, <laughs> this, is, this is version two, this is, dra you know, like uh, you can mark them as uh, different stages along the editing process? Right now it's, it's more simple than that. It's just like what day. And, and actually, we, we do it so that it, at the beginning, when you start the session, it saves like this is the beginning of the session version, and then, it, then as you make edits. So you could go back to the beginning of your session that day. Um, I may have gotten too complicated with it, but, but uh, it, it doesn't have like strict version control. It's just daily, basically. So you can export to Scrivener. Can you import from Scrivener? Not yet, but that, <laughs> that is something Troy has been asking for for a while. And I told him, no, man, we're working on Plotter Pro. But uh, we will get to importing from Scrivener soon. Yeah, Troy is on me about it, so. <laughs> so if I pay for Plotter Pro, do I also have to pay for the desktop app if I want to work offline? Nope. You do not. And I totally see the, the benefit of this, but as I'm getting started and still on a budget and I don't need those other services yet, if I were to buy the regular one, will I be able to upgrade or will I just have to flat out buy it again? Yeah, you can upgrade later. Okay. There'll be an option from in your account. Okay. The lady, the lady in blue. Option exist yet for those of us who are already devotees? Um, send us an email. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll reply while I'm talking to someone else. <laughs> So the question is, uh, what about uh, bi-directional with Word? Going, importing and exporting out of Word. Oh, same deal. It's not possible yet, but. You can export to Word, um, but yeah, you can't import yet. <laughs> We're really making you walk. Getting in your daily exercise. Um, okay, so I have Plotter for desktop. But I want to make sure I understand how his question was answered earlier. So, because I think I messed this up earlier when I was trying to work through Plotter. A different version is done for a session. So if I open up the uh, software on Monday, it will save Monday's work. And if I open up it again on Tuesday, it will take, it'll now just be Tuesday's work. Can I go back to Monday's work? Yeah, we don't call them versions, they're just backups. They're, yeah, how, how are they called? Because yeah. I think that was kind of like my confusion when I was looking, because I'm going, what are all these backups <laughs> on my desk? Yeah, so in the account menu, there's a backups area, and you can see all the backups for each day, and so you could just go back to that day, you just open up that, that day's uh, backup. And I can delete the ones I don't need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm always scared to delete stuff when it's like shows backup. I'm like, 
Well, yeah, if I delete this, I'm not deleting all this work. Backups, but I know some people only want like 30 days, and it does allow you to do that. So, so I can have 30 days worth of backup. You can have as many days as you want. You don't have to do okay. 30 days. Yeah. And to access Plotter Pro, it would be an additional cost to people who already have Plotter. Correct, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and I'm on the desktop version too. It's been great. Um, when you integrate with Atticus, will it still work with desktop? If we just if we don't upgrade to Pro, do you know? Uh, the plan is yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And will the desktop version maintain the same uh, feature set as you proceed with Pro? I mean, it's basically the same, just without the web integration. Or yeah, there's going to be a lot of things that are only going to be in Pro. Like we have a lot of ideas for better collaboration things sure. that you could do, and those obviously wouldn't be available in sure. the desktop. But, sure. Yeah. But everything. I mean, anything that you could do within the timeline itself basically yep. would be the same. So I mean there might also be like a pro writing aid integration or things that, like that that are online based that you know those would be in the pro version for example. Anyone else? In the back with the ears. <laughs> um where is it stored in the cloud? Is it syncing with Dropbox or is it stored on your server somewhere? Um, how technical do you want me to get? <laughs> It is stored, stored on a server, yes. So, but the desktop one, it, it doesn't. It's stored on your computer. How it is currently before Pro, it's stored on your computer. So you have that choice. If you don't want it in a server, then that's fine. Uh-oh. Oh. OK. Um, Stacy reminded me that tomorrow at 12.45, I was supposed to announce that at 12.45 somewhere in the lobby, if you currently have Plotter, we'd love to get um, a quick video of you, why you like it and why you use it. So 12.45 in the lobby, we'll be there just taking videos, quick videos of people. So look for those two. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Yes, another thing we almost forgot. Thank you very much. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so we uh, we uh, had a giveaway that we announced um, on industry day. So uh, Cameron is going to announce the winner in dramatic fashion. And the winner is Kelly Ruiz. Is she here? Oh, anticlimactic. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so we'll be emailing her. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're all winners in our book. Yes. Let's go into it. Yeah. Let's go back to the demo. We have um, we don't have save the cat currently, uh, but you you can make it very easily. Um, and there are people who have one that you could probably find it. Right, and there's a YouTube video actually that goes through how to set up a save the cat template. He also wouldn't give me. So we've got a bunch of them here. You can um, you can sort or you can filter just to see the different genres. So we've got horror, mystery, playwright, romance, short stories, and then to see Ryan will show you some of the names of them. You may be familiar with some and not others, so they're you know they're good to experiment with. You can also uh, create your own kind of mix and match if it, if you have your own system, you can create your own templates in there. Yeah, so I can show you a few. Um, so we have the hero's journey. Let's see how this goes. So uh, here we have a new project with the hero's journey. So you can see it goes has a scene card for each step in the process of the journey. Whoops. Slippery fingers. 
So here, if we click into this, you can see uh, there's explanation of what to do in this part of the template. It gives you some directions. Um, and each scene card in the, in the template has these sorts of details. Um, there are ones for romance, uh, mysteries, cozy mysteries. We just added some one for horror. Uh, so we, we, we're always adding more. Um, but, uh, and if you have any recommendations, um, help us. Just help us get the permissions from the person. We're, <laughs> we're glad to put it in there. Um, uh, so do you want to show anything else in the program itself? Probably more questions if there are any. Do you have any other questions? Yes, we do. Oh, you repeat the question. Oh, sorry. Uh, he asked, do we have Dan Harmon's story circle as a template? And the answer is yes, we do. So let me show you how that works. So here you have, if we go down, it is called story, story circle. Look at that. All right, so if we open that up, you'll see uh, it goes through uh, each of the steps in that in that process. Awesome. People love templates. Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty much any feature that's in. Oh, sorry. He asked, uh, will the templates, as they're updated, also be added to Pro and vice versa? Uh, so yes, yeah, things like the templates will be added to both. Uh, the Pro version, like, like someone else asked, will have certain features that are only, you can only really have them on an online version, uh, but the templates wouldn't be one of them. Anyone else? license. Right. So uh, the current lifetime licenses, um, they go from $99 for one device to, I believe, $199 for five devices. Uh, with the pro version, there's, there's no device limitations. Um, so you could just, you, you're just a subscription model. We're in the red. Okay, it's just scaring me a little bit. <laughs> um, we can, uh, if no one else has any questions, we can go through a few more of the features. Great, okay, so we're doing what uh, Craig and Michael did. All right, we've got to come up with stuff. Um, well, so one thing we didn't show was the outline, and maybe it'd be better to show in a different... Uh, Go back to the three little pigs. And so here's the outline for, for the three little pigs. And the outline is really useful because this is how you're used to seeing the story. So it's more vertical, and you can just scroll through it easily. Oh. And, uh, and you can also see what characters are in it, what places. You can drag and drop from here. You can edit from here. But one of the great things about the outline is you can filter to just see one plot line. So if you just want to read through the main plot, or if you just want to um, read through one character's plot and see where the, di the beats in just this way, just see right, you know, beat by beat um, in, in succession, that's the word I was looking for. Um, you can see that character's beats. And this little sidebar over here shows you the colors of the plot lines that show up in that chapter. And so you can just, at a glance, you can see, okay, yeah, all the plot lines are there, or no, wait, I'm missing one. Or, you know, this, uh, the red doesn't show up very much, but it should. He's the main character, so why is it not there? Those kind of things. So the outline's really useful that, for that. Um, what else? You can always find more things to talk about here. All right. So uh, something else that people really like in the timeline section is the fact that you can add scenes to uh, a plot line. You can add multiple scenes to a plot line. So, for example, um, if you wanted to stack scenes vertically here, you could add scene two. Um, so if you have multiple scenes in a chapter, um, you can you can really easily add those uh, to it that way. Um, something else that we added somewhat, somewhat recently that has been really popular uh, is if you click on the settings uh, button here, you'll see we can change uh, the chapters to beats, for example, or scenes. 
And then it'll auto, all of them are auto numbered, so it just changes the auto numbering automatically for all of them. Um, you can also add colors if you're a colorful person. So we can add a dashed border around the chapters. We can change the font size. We can add a, a background color. Yes, so if you want to pretty it up or ugly it up, whoever you think about that, you can, you can do that. Um, <laughs> we hear you, Troy. Um, you could, yeah, you can also zoom out. So you can zoom out of this to see more, th more scene cards at once on the timeline here. Uh, if you have a really long story, um, you can use the small zoom view to just see the dots in the particular plot lines. Um, and then you can still edit from here. You just click in there and edit. Oops. Hello. Uh, I think I think we can. Yeah, Cameron can show you what that would look like. So we've got a. Oh, the question is. Um, if there is, let's see if I can succinctly say this. Um, so if there's, like you have pieces of a template and the template should be like beat one, beat two, but you have things in between that, can you leave it at the template says beat one, the next part of the template says beat two, but then inside of that it says chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, right? Okay, so we do have a beta setting for that, um, something that we've been working on for a while and a lot of you may be using it right now, but you can um, have different levels, so act, chapter, scene, and you can name these whatever you want. And right, that, right now that's just in beta, we're just testing it out, but um, so far it's been really successful and people have loved it. Um, but so you can, have, you can name those whatever you want, and then um, within it you'll have like act one, act two, and inside of it chapter one, chapter two, and then inside of that scene one, scene two. And you can collapse and expand. But we still we have some ideas for how to make that better, so it's not out of beta yet. But it's it's still pretty cool right now. So, oh. Okay, that's right. um, so he asked basically, you know, if you have multiple books in a series or in a project, do you have to recreate the elements like tags for each one? Um, and so the short answer is no. Um, if you're in a project like this, this is one file. You know, you can think of this one project file as housing your series. Uh, so all these tags, you know, are, they, they work al along within each of those books. Um, so you wouldn't have to recreate them. So if we go to book two um, and we want to, you know, add something, you know, all of the tags that we have here are still, they're still in the list there. Same thing with the characters and places. Um, the only, I mean, the one other situation that people might be interested in is if you created a new project um, that was separate from this one, in that case, uh, the, the tags are and the characters don't come over, but you could uh, duplicate the project basically, and that way it would bring those things over, and you just have to you know change the, the timelines. <coughs> uh, any other questions? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can do that. I mean, the the only issue, oh, sorry. Uh, she's asking if you have one subscription with multiple licenses, uh, could you share one of those installations with an editor? Uh, you could do that. Um, you would only have one account. So if they wanted, if you wanted to give them your login details, they would see your payment information and, st and such. Um, but uh, you could do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is a lot of built in React, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he asked if this was built in React, because um, he's a programmer, I'm guessing. But yes, it's built in React. Another question back there? So, 
So the question is, uh, I remember this time, uh, is the, <laughs> the question is, is there a search function to be able to easily find um, different parts of your story? No, but it's our next feature. I think it was on our list of things we're building next. So yeah, we're, we're definitely aware of that, and it's going to make it really cool. I think I saw another question. Yes, no, somebody? Yeah, so you can tag them by what book they're in, and then you can filter to just see book one, book two. Yeah, thank you. I didn't even think about that. Troy, another? Oh, yeah, so he was saying that since it, on the web, you can just Command F or Control F to search on your page. Yeah, that's something I didn't even think about. Good job, Troy. Okay, so... Thank you very much, everybody.